the first man created by God lived at the foot of a mountain. The mountain cave sheltered him from rain and wind. The forest trees provided him with the fruits he needed. The wild beasts trembled at the sight of him. Like the birds of the air he lived independently and without a defect. Yet within his soul was something lacking, an unknown kind of passion, that was incessantly dwelling. Some magnetic force was attracting him. For some rare thing, some hitherto unknown pleasure seen and enjoyed, his heart was searching. He fantasized about it during the day, he dreamed about it at night. Where shall I find that wondrous object created for me the gem the magnet that attracts me? When shall I find it? His heart was longing for that. At the same time that God created the first man, he also created the first woman. She lived on another side of the hill. She had food for the hungry, water for the thirsty, and mountain huts for shelter. Apparently not a drawback. But a flame inside was leaving Jewel and burning her. Some force was pulling her. No one knows where fear pulls her and in which direction. Some force was pulling her. No one knows where fear pulls her and in which direction. Some force was pulling her. No one knows where fear pulls her and in which direction. A huge mountain stood between the primordial man and the primordial woman, preventing them from meeting each other. One day during the hot season, due to natural law, fire started spreading in the forest. The fire was spreading rapidly around the mountain. The man and the woman felt that they would be in danger if they went into the forest and climbed the mountain. At the top of the hill they saw each other. The eyes that saw them stood without tears. They forgot the forest fire. They forgot why they climbed the mountain. They completely forgot their hunger and thirst. They instinctively knew that all this time they had lived for this one meeting. They also came to know that this was the unknown force that attracted them. They knew that the deficiency in one of them could be filled and filled by the other. Lord Brahma, the creative god, who was watching this wonderful scene, was perfectly satisfied to know that the work he had begun had begun auspiciously. At that time our Valavarya and Kundave Devi resembled the above-mentioned primordial man and primordial woman. Their intuition told them that they were born and raised in this world for this moment, for this meeting. But unlike the primordial man and the primordial woman, were they not those who led a civilized life? Therefore they could not forget the difference in their mutual status. They did not let go, full of emotion and uncontrollable. One moment they were looking at each other eye to eye and the next moment they were turning their eyes and looking at the nearby flower, tree, silkworm, stream etc. It was only after Izana Shivbata cleared his throat that both of them remembered that they were meeting here about something important. Is it true that you told Easy Butter that you wanted to see me alone? Asked the young lady with a stern voice. The severity of the voice and the posture of authority made Vandiyadeva stand upright. If you know who you are, can you answer your question? I'm afraid that Easy Butter has brought me to the wrong place. Said the heroic youth. I doubt it too. Who did you want to see? I told Lord Shiva that I want to see the Mangamani lamp of the Chola tribe, the wealth daughter of King Sundara Chola, the sister born after Aditha Kari Kalar, the beautiful daughter of Arulmas Hivarma, the goddess Ilaya Pradai Kundave. Kuntawai Prati smiled and said, I am the one who cannot bear such pride. She said. Then you are not the woman I saw at the home of the astrologer and at Arisa Langarai. Said Valavarayan. Yes, yes. I was the one who treated them so disrespectfully in those two places. You wouldn't expect to see that uncivilized mongrel again so soon. It's no use saying we'll meet again, goddess. Why? If we have parted, can we say meet again? You have not left my mind for a moment. I didn't expect throats to speak so equanimously. You will give all the glory to the Chola country. It seems that you will not give any glory to other countries. Yes, it is true that I have that crime. It makes you dislike our Chola country. What's not to like? Well liked. But there are two great dangers in this country. The thought of them frightens me. The swords and spears of the Chola soldiers are dangerous weapons. Foreigners must be careful when they come here. 
especially, those who come to do secret work. Princess! I did not mention those two dangers. I have the sword and the wand. I know how to use them too. Did you see the ferocity of your sword that day on the bank of rice paddies? How fast did your sword strike the dead crocodile? Did you bring out all the punch that was inside in one attack? Amini! I did not know that the Chola Matraces were brave women who would die in fear of a dead crocodile. I did not know that the Chola soldiers were pure warriors who would attack a dead crocodile. I threw myself into work thinking that I would make a living crocodile. It was my fault that day, and the fault of my fence that day. It was the fault of that strange crocodile. Wasn't Vera Van Diathavar, who was born in the Monkey Clan, died earlier instead of waiting for Vilad to arrive? What a disgrace! What other dangers did you mention? The eddies created by fresh floods in these Chola rivers are dangerous. They should never be trusted. They made me suffocate. How did you get caught in the flood? You don't seem to put your foot in the water, do you? If Veth Alam is given life and does not climb the Moringa tree, what will be the end of the matter? Because of his arrival in the Chola country, the river has become flooded and caught in a whirlpool. It happened because of the stubbornness of a foolish child who accompanied me. Listen, goddess! That child cannot tell a small lie. So he said. The verb that came. What you say is puzzling. It would be better if you could explain a little more. I tell you. The chief of the Tanjore fort accused me of being a petty rascal and sent men to arrest me, who had come as an emissary with a letter from their dear brother. I did not want to be imprisoned before the matter I came for was accomplished. Therefore, I took the boy of the house who stayed in Tanjore to guide me and left. Whose house did you stay in Tanjore? I stayed outside the fort at the house of a flower girl. That mother was dumb. Oko. Her name. I don't know that mother's name, but I only know her son's name. His name is Sendan Amuthan. I was right, say it above. I was coming towards this old town with Akaruvan on my horse. By then, some of Palyavatarayar's men had come close to us. I did not want to be caught by them before I had come to finish the task. When Kudamurati River came, Akaruvan said to Akaruvan, I will get down here. Brother. You leave the horse for paddock. They will keep chasing you, thinking you are me. They will deceive you after catching you. If they ask where I am, tell them that I fell into the river and drowned. I said. The boy seems to be a descendant of Arakandra. How can I lie about being drunk when you're not? He said. So that the boy would not have to lie, I tied him to the horse and jumped into the river and drowned. Mama! In the rivers of this Chola country, that too on the banks, what eddies of water! I was overwhelmed by them. In the end, I managed to survive by holding on to a tree root on the shore. Goddess! What do you think I saw and thought when I was caught in the whirlpool and was spinning and swooning and suffocating? How would I know? Maybe Gayendra was thinking of moksha. No, no, I saw some gillfish caught in the eddy like me. Those gillfish reminded me of the eyes of these Chola women. One who is caught in the eddy of a river may somehow survive, but one who is caught in the eddy of these Chola women has not a foot to escape. I thought I couldn't. Some people take pride in blaming women like this, it is the custom of boys to blame women for their mistakes. That's the custom I picked up. What's wrong with that? Van Dye the Van said. At that time, a whisper was heard from inside the palace. This was followed by the tinkling sound of the stem cymbals and the sound of the brass. Then, many sweet voices of young women rang out together. Until the end of the song, Kuntha and Vandiyadeva were engrossed in its sweetness. Again the sound of the gong signaled the start of the dance with the sound of the instrument. Looks like a crowing in the palace. I saw a crowing in the Kadampur mansion. It was totally different. Said Valavarayan. Yes, my friends are clamoring. They'll be looking for me soon enough. What's their business? Asked the youngest Pratikundave Devi. 
This is what I have come for, the straw of their Tamayanar, I have escaped many perils, saved from eddies eddies, and brought this. Valavarayan said and took the leaf and held it out.